Hi everyone, uh, it's time for another Darktable video. In this video I'll be showing you how to install the Git version of Darktable, the absolute bleeding edge development version. Um, I'm going to do that on a virtual box, virtual machine, so let's get straight into it. So, I'm now in my virtual machine. Um, I've just got to say that this is pretty much a newly installed virtual machine with Ubuntu 13.04. Um, it should work, this process should work with any uh, Ubuntu and you can even install it on other distros but I'm just going to go through Ubuntu. So the first thing we need to do is go to the Darktable website. On here is all the information you need. Uh, we just click on the install section here um, and basically we want to get the hot new stuff from the Git repository. Sorry, my uh, internet's a bit slow. So let's click on Git repository. You can see that uh, there's a couple of things we need to install. We need to install Git itself, and then we need to go and clone the source, and then we need to build it. But the first thing you need to do here is install the build dependencies, which you can easily do by clicking on here. So this is just skipping up and down the same page, um, the install source. So uh, let's install the build dependencies for Ubuntu. Okay, so let's grab that, open up a new terminal, I'm pressing Control alt t because that's the easiest way. Just uh, maximize that and I'm just going to paste that in there. Alright, so those are the build dependencies. There's a few of them, but that's, trust me when I say that's not that many for, uh, for building from source for, for most programs. So I'm just going to go ahead and install that. I'll probably skip ahead now. All right, so we have all the dependencies, the build dependencies installed now. So I'll just switch back to the web browser. <coughs> so uh, we can scroll to the top here again and just click on the Git repository section to go back. So the other thing we need to do is install Git. So the uh, command for doing that is here. Obviously, by the way, we don't uh, type this dollars. This just represents the prompt. So I'll just select that and I'll just paste that into my terminal now and I'm going to add one more command called tig. Uh, now that tig command just allows you to see the uh, logs um, of the repository. So let's go back now to the website and so we can see that uh, this is just telling us to type cd which take, just takes us to our home directory, which is where we are now. Uh, you can put it anywhere you want. This is, doesn't necessarily need to be in your home directory. It's just easy to find there. But now I'm going to copy the git clone command here. This command will go to GitHub and it will clone a copy of the source repository. Um, what this source repository is, is all of the uh, source code files, the latest version, but not just the latest version, all of the history of all of those uh, source code files. So in fact it allows you to go back and see previous versions and see how things were changed and um, you know create a branch of the source code which is your own sort of playground where you can make um, changes, you can work on a particular feature um, and in, in the Git world, what you do is you work on that feature on your own branch. And then once you think it's good enough, you submit a pull request to the original developer and they can choose then to pull that into their repository or not, depending on um, you know whether they think it's good. So now I'll probably fast forward this a little bit. This takes a bit of time to download all of the files. Um, once we've done that, we'll come back and we'll build. All right, so we're back. Uh, one thing I should mention, I guess, is that uh, you don't need to worry about any of this Git stuff. At the moment, we're just using Git to pull down the latest version of the source code, and we're just going to build it. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit more how, if you're a non-developer, how you can uh, contribute to the project a little bit later on. So we've just cloned the latest version of the source code. So the next step is to go on to the building. Um, so what this is 
telling us to do is change into our home directory and the dark table directory within our home directory. So you can see that this command here, what it did was it created a dark table directory that contained the source code. So we're now just going into that directory. Obviously, uh, you could just type cd dark table there if you're already in your home directory. So now uh, we have a bunch of files in here, the latest version of the source. Uh, let me just show you quickly what TIG does. I'll just type TIG, hit enter. Uh, it just shows you the latest changes that have been made to Darktable. So you can see all of the um, all of the patches that have been applied. And I can hit enter and that will show me the changes that have been uh, made to that file. Um, so I can scroll down and I can look at the look at the diffs and so forth. But this is this is just development stuff. You don't need to know this in order to build. I just thought I'd show it. So I'm just going to quit out by pressing Q. Okay, so let's build uh, Darktable. What I'm going to do is uh, I think we go back to the website and it just tells us to run dot slash build dot sh. Okay, so go back in here. We type that in. Dot slash just means in the current directory run build dot sh. So I'll hit that. So what this is doing is it's taking all of the source code files and it's actually compiling them into a program which we can then install. Okay, so um, the comp compilation process is complete. We've built our binaries. Uh, one other thing I should mention actually at this point is that if you want to install it somewhere else other than the default, by default it's in slash opt. Uh, which keeps it completely separate from your running system. Uh, a lot of people would like to install it, for example, in, so type minus minus prefix to tell it where to install. A lot of people would like to install it in, say, user local. But personally, when I'm using this really cutting edge development version, I just leave it to installing in opt, which means I just run this build command. But anyway, we've, we've run the build command. Now it's telling us it's finished building. How do you want to install it? Well, to install it, we just run this command here. So I just copied and pasted that command. So that's now putting it into slash opt. Okay, so that's now installed. Uh, now to run it for the first time, I just type slash opt, slash dark table, slash bin, slash dark table. Okay, so you can create a symbolic link to that if you want, or add it to your path or whatever. And we just hit enter on there, and here we are. We have our latest version of Darktable. 1.3 plus 903, which means we've got 903 patches since the original. And here is the git hash. So, why don't we just use it for something quickly. Let's import a folder. Uh, let's see, I've got something on my desktop that I put here as a demo. This is just me wandering around uh, Oxford. So one other thing I should mention, uh, I mentioned at the uh, outset that you could help with the development of Darktable. So if, if you notice anything uh, weird going on in Darktable, you notice a bug, you notice something doesn't um, behave the way you expect, you can uh, give feedback. Uh, and if we go back to the Darktable website uh, and we go to the contact section, there's obviously the development mailing list here. That's the best place to uh, report anything that you think is not working correctly uh, and if you're really keen you can join the IRC channel there's a lot of people in the IRC channel all the time so um, you might get a quick response there um, and if you uh, really want to get involved you can come and check out this development section of the wiki okay hope that helped see you later